and at the helm of the cement company, well, he, he had shares. And he got paid for his shares. Whether he got more than he invested, we don't know. I don't know. I don't care. But he didn't walk away like the Petrotrain employees. And although he says they'll be treated fairly, I don't know what is that about. You think that money will last these people a lifetime at the stage of their lives they are? You think the money that they will get will be able to settle all of their debt and put them debt free and still give them money to continue to take care of their family and their children? But no discussion on what to do. No information. But you think Roger know to ask the questions about that? You think Roger have any understanding of what the capacity and the production output of petrogen is? How much gas you produce per day, the different um, 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 APIs, if you want to call it that. Regular, premium, jet fuel, kerosene. You think he knows? You think we know the conversion rate? You think we have any understanding? Anybody could tell me what is the capacity of use of fuel in Trinidad and Tobago on a daily basis? You think we don't know that? Isn't petrol, isn't MP the distributor, the only distributor of fuel in this country? So we don't have that information. I wonder if that is in the dossier, in the document, when they were going to make the decision to shut it down. And then what are we going to be paying for fuel there? Right now, the price in Trinidad and Tobago is almost the same as what they pay in America. And in the American market, the people who work in the petrochemical industry, based on their US rate, converted to TT, maybe two and a half times what people in Trinidad and Tobago get in. And they are selling it at that price and making a profit. We are at the same level like them. And we're losing money. But with that said, 15 minutes after that golden hour of 11 o'clock, that time check came to you with the value optical and uh, good morning, Phil. Good morning, Robert. Good morning, Kevin DeFritas. Good morning to all the loyal listeners on 104.7. Good morning to all those following us on social media. What a week, Robert. But I just, I, I don't know about you. I, I, what a week. 56 years and the gift to the nation is to shut down the petrochemical um, plant. Three days before we celebrate the 56th anniversary, the best gift the government of Trinidad and Tobago could give to its people is Roger, sorry brother, the 15 million was just the beat. We had to shut it down. That's good to give him. Exxon, Guyana, anticipates an oil boom. In excess of the oil boom Trinidad and Tobago enjoyed in the 80s. We're talking hundreds of billions of dollars to be monetized through refineries. And what is the closest refinery to Guyana? Petrochemical. Petrochemical. Petrochemical is the closest refinery to Guyana. And the people who are behind the machinations to shut Petrochem down, because Robert, I want to tell you this. I want you to be able to listen to this statement. Every single ministry, public, or state enterprise is riddled with corruption, mismanagement, are bloated with salaries beyond what they can pay, are all in debt to the state, and are lined up on that same chopping block for when somebody wants to come and buy Wasa, B-Mobile, any of the companies. That's how you do it. It's how shock doctrine works. It's called industrial vandalization when you're dealing with a company like Petrotrin. You ruin it. So you're able to say, it's $12 billion in debt. Why is it $12 billion in debt? Malcolm Jones, Ken Julian. So about that. So about that $12 billion in debt. Because if you face, if those who pass in themselves off as the rescuers take responsibility for the damage, the conversation changes. The $12 billion in debt is as a direct result of a gas to liquids plant and a plant upgrade that we did not need, especially if our oil production was down to 40,000 barrels. It was already redundant. It was already obsolete. Why spend the money through the bonds that they floated 
to upgrade a refinery that you are not going to need? These are the questions I want to put in the public space, eh? Because you say twelve million dollars in debt. Twelve billion. Twelve billion. Sorry, twelve billion dollars in debt. Let's take that twelve billion dollars off the table, because were it not for the PNM and Malcolm Jones and the and the refinery upgrade, that twelve billion dollars does not exist. Let's talk about the three billion dollars it owes the state. You have a way of saying left pocket, right pocket. Let me deal with that. The state could write that off for now. We're the last in the line. It is more. It is in our best interest to keep that company up and functional than it is to dog it for three billion dollars in duties or taxes, whatever. We write off more for private sector companies that we deal with this here. If you remove that fifteen billion dollars, Petrotrain is not in the crisis that they say it is. They say that Petrotrain is going to lose two billion dollars a year because we produce forty thousand barrels of oil a day. And we need 140,000 barrels of oil to make Petrotrin viable. Now, there's an executive order signed by the President of the United States restraining Venezuela from selling any products via any machinery or company or asset owned by the United States. That's... I read that in the news this morning. That exists. That executive order sanction. So, so this idea of... Um Chevron, as you say. Who is he Exxon. Exxon. America. That's Trump Guyana, Trump. not Venezuela. The deal that he went, that the Prime I Minister to went to Venezuela to make yeah. in the um, Dragon gas field yes. accesses our platform via a shell pipeline. Right. Which, which, we, which I'm understanding Shell didn't sign the agreement. Shell cannot because of this executive order. Yeah, they, no, 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 they can't they, just they, block they, them. They, they the directors action. of Shell will get jailed. Yeah, this yeah. is not a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, can't do it. they cannot. Use you cannot use money. the Shell pipeline. Yeah. So they lied. Keith Rowley lied. Maduro and Keith Rowley signed a wish. Not a plan. Yeah, a wish. It was a wish. If we could get the gas to you, we'll do a deal. Yeah, if. So. And capital letters. That's why they couldn't give any details. Stuart Young knows. That there are no details to be given. Yeah, because there's nothing to give. There's nothing to give. Uh, as you say, fairly You cannot get the gas from Venezuela as close as it is to Trinidad without violating that order, that executive order. And at the flick of a switch, Trinidad will be annexed to that executive order. And if we ever knew what sufferation was, let the United States put an executive order ordering a trade embargo around Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. Well, boy, no TV. Nothing. Nothing. We will no, eat food. no cable. No food. We will eat rat. We will, we will fight for stray dog. Well, I mean, I don't hope that we will get to that. No, but, no, no. But, but the end result no, we, the public needs to know this. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is the, the public, public needs to know this. But let's look at this. Oil is a different thing. Because we are not part of the United States of America. We can buy oil from Venezuela. The executive order states <clears throat> that it is, not, it is to protect the people of Venezuela from the administration, the Maduro administration, selling Venezuelan assets at fire sale prices for quick corruption cash. So that the oil price that we have to pay Venezuela for oil has to be market value. Last check, 76.25 US per barrel, Brent Sweet Crude. You following that? I'm following. So it's $25 more than the $50 benchmark that we set our budget at. Oil is already $25 higher. The big problem with Petrotrain, if you were to take over Petrotrain today and run it, is that the price per barrel to refine is very high based on cost to operate the plant because of debt service and bloated salaries. Inefficiency. There are people in Trinidad and Tobago, there are companies in Trinidad and Tobago that supply to all the state enterprises and all the public offices invoices, nothing else. They just invoice them regularly for things they do not supply and receive payment for that they share with each other, including ministers, including permanent secretaries, and all of the safeguards that are supposed to protect the country. I put to Trinidad and Tobago 
six months ago, I say it again. At least fifty percent of our sixty billion dollar annual budget is theft. Mm -hmm. At least fifty percent is theft, corruption, and bloat. Two billion dollars a year you looking for to keep petrol train afloat? Take the two billion from the five billion you spend on the Ministry of Education that fails ten thousand children a year. Then doing them no difference. Just let them stay home. They rather come to school to learn porn and fight. Our education system fails. No, yeah, man, can't see my good ten thousand children do that. I, I, I can't I can't have Robert, much to that. Robert. We don't have ten thousand children. We because have twenty thousand. No, no, no. Okay. I'm talking about who fails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I talk about is who fail. And if you need to find the money, I'm telling you. There are things that you could do. And I want to put this well, to well, them. Well, well, at the end of the day, if you're making this the issue. The government just was able to oversubscribe the bond by at least three billion. Mm -hmm. All right? So it is not to say that the money to carry petrol train for another year. Do exist. It doesn't exist. No. Um, the, the, the funny part is when this deal was going down 10 or 12 years ago, Published in the newspaper was a guy who I knew very well that was then the operating officer of Citibank in Trinidad. His name, Dennis Evans. So I picked up the phone and I called him and I said, Dennis, what's going on by? He said, I mean by Robert. I said, but I see only little in seven or eight hundred million dollars. He said, yeah, boy, the balance sheet could with US or TT? US, US. Right. The balance sheet can be standard. Correct. I say, is this a sovereign guarantee? He said, no. It's being loaned on the ability of the company. But the asset base is strong. Hold on. $40 billion assets. In today's newspaper, here is what the great chairman had to say. Willie Espinet? Yeah, yeah, Willie, really, Willie. Really. The one who said that they were made up, they made $86 million yeah, 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 profit one, in June? Yeah, correct. That's right. The him one who running the shipping companies? Yeah, well, I don't know about that, but ah. forget that. That is small, that is small peanuts. He identified two of the projects at the failed at, at the failed World GDL and the ultra low salt eagle plant, addressing Petrotrain's eight billion debt repayment due in August 2019. Espinay said this could have implications for Trinidad to deliver sovereign debt. Now, how it could have any implication for sovereign debt? If it was if never a sovereign, if, if it was a sovereign guarantee, you know. Yeah, is what the smart. Yeah, is what the smart man tells the country. The bond payment is not guaranteed by government explicitly, but it is implicitly guaranteed by government. The bondholders expect government is going to pay if Petrotrain can't, which if it can't, which it can't in its current state. Now the rating agencies that rate Petrotrain are in are at us every day. Unless we can demonstrate to them that we have the capability of renewing our debt, refinancing our debt, or paying it off, they would downgrade us. Hear what? Take the damn downgrade. Robert. Take the damn downgrade. You raised an issue earlier. And you keep Rowley. Don't be so stupid. You raised the issue. If the damn debt is not guaranteed by the government, do not accept the debt. Not, Let the damn not only people that, take over the do plant. Not, do not lie to the people. Do not lie to the people. Let them let the let the uh, let the bank sell it, and then somebody will buy it. But let the it. union then come together and buy it, because the union will be able to raise the money. The people in Trinidad and Tobago will buy it. Don't make the same damn mistake. But you see, that's the point with Clico again. It comes back to the Clico issue, where we own something, and then you're going to sell it to us. It's ours. <coughs> it's, it's a kind of creative bookkeeping that we're doing, Robert. That, that just, again, left pocket, right pocket. Petrotrain belongs to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. So that you as a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago are a it's shareholder. Money. Right. Money. So this is what I want to tell you. What they need to do is vest Petrotrain in a company owned by all citizens. It's to them a share. It's Good. No money. No money changing hands. There is a debt that <coughs> comes with Petrotrain. And that debt can be serviced and managed to a proper operational company. Seven billion dollars a year is earned selling 40,000 barrels of oil For a sure. day. So seven billion dollars every year. If you remove all of the debt of Petrotrain, don't sell with refinery. Just sell the oil. Seven billion dollars a year. I'm showing you this. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Seven billion dollars a year. Go and do a deal with Guyana. 
to refine Guyanese oil in Petrotrin. Put Petrotrin and sit with the union that you're talking about. You spoke about something called parity a couple of years ago. Remember that? And put the unions to sit down. World market prices is your salary. <laughs> World market prices is your salary. But I will give you a commission and a bonus at the end of every year that we save on losses and we incur profit. Get a profit sharing plan so that the workers have a vested interest in Petrotrin functioning I, profitably. I, I want to make it known to Trinidad and Tobago that I am interested in leading a charge to take over Petrotrin. If the unions want to get the best of my brains, I suggest you make an appointment to come and see me. I have a very expensive fee. I'm not doing it for free. But I can show you how we could take over Petrotrin and make it make money. There are people and you will become the owners, eh? Yeah. I want to be a good shareholder on the side. I'm not really. No, but you need to set up a board of directors to properly run the company. And that board of directors need to be put in front of the public every quarter. You know, the, the, every you know, quarter. You know, they have two men on this board. That sounds nice. One is a fellow from Arima Door Center, who is in charge of the NLCB, that just screwed up the situation with regards to the Lotto and taking out the Robert, everything is theft. Okay. Everything he, is corruption. He, the man who is a financial man on this board was the man who was on the board before that they put back there when the situation Robert, was. Robert, there are people who, who find themselves on boards. Or in, uh, or in ministries to learn the business of Trinidad and Tobago to, to drive them into the ground well, and come I, back I, and I'm buy gonna, them I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna and try, raise I'm funds. Gonna, I'm going to try another thing. Uh, good, good morning, people. Um, you know, we, we are from America, and I think that we can do a very good deal with you. Uh, can, can you make some arrangements for me so that I can, I can, I can verify uh, what kind of condition you guys will get? We Texan guys really work behind the scenes and all, but we're very happy to work with you Trinis because you Trinis don't seem to understand how to make money. Everything that took place this week with Petrotrin, I shared on Facebook eight months ago. Everything that happened in Petrotrin is part, Everything of, a, is that part of a bigger plan somewhere yeah. down the road for but someone we knew. to make money. Hey, see, I want to tell people we've got, we got to take a little time, we've got to pay some bills when we come back, we join the conversation. 56 years of independence. How you feel? I don't know how you feel, but I want to vomit. Because at the end of the day, we are not going anywhere fast. Stay tuned, we'll be back. All of you on social media, please share the video. Thank you. We're on a break for an ad. Have you seen the video for what the clip is? The pre recording of the video of the draws for an LCD. I haven't seen that video yet. I hear it. Like, there's talk that it is pre recorded. They choose who will in before. It but are your partner them. running them draws? And they move an LCB draw into your partner, Jerry Building. But they lose it. Conveniently located at Trinity Cougar. I haven't seen the video yet. We're talking at the NFC draws are drawn early. So it's pre drawn and then they tell you the live draw, but they already pick up now. No, but they they sell out that article saying that's not true. Of course they sell out that article like that, that's not true. So I must have been out to say that they have no 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 things. They are long in the road to bust people's tires. And then it turned out that it's true. Yeah, but they mark about it talking that it is true. They provided evidence that look the thing here. Robert, it gets serious now, though. They, they, they show the hand. They come to take everything, and if they get away with petrol train, Wasa next, you know. Wasa is big money, you know. Oh, yeah. Wasa is a million people paying for water every, every twice a year, you know. That's big money. You know. Four times a year. Four times a year. Wasa, TN Tech, B Mobile, that's what they want. Could imagine if the people of this country realize their power, boy. Well, that's the point I was making earlier. But we are the biggest problem. We are the problem. Don't blame nobody else. No, because we are allowing it to happen.
We are saying come rape us, it's okay. I if you break in somebody's house and they sit on there watching TV and allow you to rubbish through everything they have and take what you want and go. And don't even get up and ask you a question. Well that is what they have. That is what is happening in Chinese shop now. As we saw the other day, the man died too. And when he died too, they leave the child. And then finally when they do organize themselves, it's because um, the woman ran out and pick up the child and she come back out and say, hey, you, you want money? You looking for money? Oh, okay, okay, I'll show you. Money, money, uh, money, money. And they take the money and then they go. Dive through it. Could be little, could be little, there's having to jump. Just jump and switch. You know, it's having the burger cooking low. But I slim fella jump and just slide on that guy. He's fighting. One point trick movement and he was true. Hopefully, get paid for that. And he's pretty sure that man who can just see it coming from all this. Does it take off? Leave the child right there. Little Chinese child by himself. A little Chinese child. Literally, like a toddler. Leave the child playing right there. The man take off and go on. Man, the country, that's he, was he was on the inside, but running the stuff? He was behind the counter, looking there. He saw the bandits come in from a distance and he left the child, he took off. That's when the mother or somebody ran outside and said, how anybody because she realized the child there and the bandit there without them. He follows this guy. He said, yeah, I don't come and protect the child. Because the man gone and leave the child. That was a couple of weeks ago that we did not really know how to sit with him. PTSD workers. Just like each other. Yeah. yeah. I see this. They're sharing one that the other is not Trinidad with it. They come and shoot this man. The security guard and take the shotgun. But they yeah. say that wasn't Trinidad. I can't say I'm speaking Spanish and that. They say it wasn't Trinidad. The one where they shoot the guard and take the shotgun. Way in Trinidad. Back. 25 minutes before the golden hour of 12 o'clock, just remember that this afternoon you're going to be entertained by none other than Nigel Snipes with his DJ selector Kern and they'll take you all the way until 3. In the meanwhile, Party Foods is having their specials. Forte fruta, 100% apple juice for only $40. Two Bergia fries for only $20. Five Pringles for only $15. Back to school stationery is available. Two Nesquik, 200 grams for only $22. Bananas at $3.50 a pound. Three cases of chub chubby for only $100. And five Dasani water, $3.55 ml for $100. Hey, deal of deals. Go on down to Hearty Foods in Arima and cash in on those deals. Kevin. Well, I really should make this out after. This. All right, I agree with you. Mount St. Mary the Cruz says pork and parang. 22nd of September 2018, that's the date. St. Joseph is the place. La Jolla is the venue. Get your early bird tickets for $100. Well stocked bar and food. Music will be by Sensational Sammy Kabuki and the Lara Brothers Parang Band. Tickets available at Mount St. Mary Credit Union office in St. Augustine, Hearty Foods in Arima, Serious Hardware Limited in Malabar, Cool Beard Drugstore in Chin Chin. That's Chin Chin Road in Kunupia and Diamond by Sierra in High Street in San Fernando. For more information, call 298, that's 298-5182 or 643-5702. 643-5702. The gentleman from Tunapuna called saying, you know, Robert, what's going on? Who get the shares? Who buy the, who get those things? Blah, 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 blah. Well, we have a, a quick piece of information. I, I have written officially to the Ministry of Finance to ask for a proper breakdown. How much of the money of, of was uh, allocated to corporations, how much was allocated to government institutions like um, NIPDEC and... Uh, state enterprises. Uh, yeah, state enterprises. How much has been, uh, was allocated to individuals and how much was allocated to conglomerates, all right? Um, I haven't got that, but a gentleman did a quick report and he indicated that on the 4.5 bond, Individuals would have been entitled to approximately four hundred and five million dollars. Now I really don't know whether we was that a ten straight ten percent? Uh to the three point eight percent of Over what bond. Term? If the early one, if the, I think the five What years. was the five years? five years? He says on the longer bond, 
individuals would have had 192 million, 12%. And he said on the longer term bond, they would have had 10%, 121 million. So the total would have been like about a billion dollars, four and two, six, 750 million dollars. Yeah, interest. Of, no, 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 of, of a pick up, pick up money. People investing, individuals investing right. 750 million dollars in that bond. But, I mean, when you think of 1.3 million Trinidad and Tobago citizens, and you say it's $1,000 or, or whatever was the minimum they could have buy. I mean, I passed by FCB, which is one of the agents, so you have to go there and get a broker or whatever it is. And there was no big set of traffic going in, in, in the offices. So, I don't know how this Institutional happen. investors bought up the majority. We know that for a fact, but we, we know that for a fact. And exactly, and Robert, you see, you see, people don't understand. Eh? Here were people. This wasn't free money sitting down there, idle doing nothing. You this mean was it? money that was sitting down there, used for something, but converted from what it was because the interest more they left were pocket, getting, more left pocket, right pocket. T and Tech pension fund. Yeah, you sure. have to check and see. You see, they have things like pension funds, com contributory funds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason is raising that, Robert, is if an institution takes contributions from workers and invests and the institution keeps the interest and does not pass it on to the fund to the stock mm. owner because it's your money they use they work your money you should have gotten a share and i'm asking this question today we're talking a lot of things about petrotrin but we're not talking about the board and there is something called fiduciary responsibility oh, sure. There's something called fiduciary responsibility and there is, there is every likelihood that crimes took place. Petrotrin is now a crime scene. That's what it is. We need forensic accounting to identify what took place here and there should be an inquiry. Right now, no governmental decision because government hands not clean. So you cannot let himself judge himself. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree. The PNM that Keith Rowley leads now is the same PNM that Patrick Manning led that destroyed Petrotrin. Well, Keith Rowley was the one that said in the parliament in 2009 that had a very confrontational position with regards to Petrotrin. He brought a lot of information to the table that is already known. Because he but he is the same man who raised the Aruba and then come and finished the Aruba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is liar-in-chief. The man has two tongues in his head. You cannot tell the difference between Keith Rowley in 2009 and Keith Rowley in 2003 and Keith Rowley in 2018. I asked, when you were fired from the cabinet in 2009, you came to the nation. And I'll never forget this. Because he said in the parliament... I went to the Prime Minister in August 2003. That's exactly how he said it. And told him. But you see what I just said? Eh? That there was big rigging. Taking place in Unicorn. But I want to tell you this. Six years, you sat there and ate cabinet food and drank cabinet wine. Mm -hmm. Knowing. Orange, knowing. And ate the puffs. You said bid rigging. That was 10 times worse than what took place at Piaco. Yeah. So you knew that in 2003, because you went to the Prime Minister. Mm. In between 2003, Robert, and 2009, there was an election. He didn't come to the people. He didn't go to the media. He didn't go to the police. Like how he dealt with Email gate. That's the point I was just going to make with you because it's the same man. That it's the same going, thing. You know, but you see, the good part about him is he understands about going to authority, heads of figures, figureheads. He, because he went to Patrick and he tell him. He understands he, how to stunt. And then with the email gate, you he, have then, a, he then took it to the president. You have a stunt artist as prime minister. Well, we'll you have a Decepticon. We'll Keith Rowley is we'll king of the happens. infidels. He is liar in chief. Trinidad and Tobago Robert has to face this. You cannot, you cannot take guidance from Keith Rowley on Sandals. You do not know if you can trust him. No, well, Sandals is another big issue. Robert Keith Rowley is functioning like Sandals agent in Trinidad and Tobago. I have had sales reps work for me, not as motivated to make a sale 
as Rowley is to make that sale for sandals. Okay, so it's uh, 17 minutes before 12 o'clock. That time check in to the kind courtesy of Super Quality. And uh, here is some information I think you need to have. Today is the 30th. It's the night. It's the day before independence. And the Center of Excellence in Makoya is going to come alive. Yes, the countdown is on. The last major summer event, the best men on radio tonight. Party with the Hitman Howie T, Sensational Sammy, Sir Charles, DJ Darrell, and Beats by Robin. Get your two on one ticket, yes, two on one ticket for only $150. It's your independence gift. Please, Paul Spain, Bobby's Bar in Cuba, all occasions, Twin City Mall, La Luna in Aruca, and Hearty Foods in Arena. Get them now. Complimentary drinks on entry. So remember this Tuesday, the night before independence. Today. It's the best man on radio. That's tonight. A Machelan Classic Party, Center of Excellence in Makoya. I should also remind you about those of you out there who are looking to save a buck in tough times. And there are a lot of tough times going on. Of course, you want to just stretch your money as far as you can take it. Well, Save a Lot Food Stores has been renamed Save a Buck Food Stores. And they have reopened to serve you. They are located on the Eastern Main Road in Mount Hope. And it's a place where you can find all of the brands you're accustomed to. Plus, they have and increase the amount of brands you are familiar with. And can still expect all the fantastic prices that you are accustomed to. Like, you can get a 25 pound gas tank and save a buck. Uh huh, that's right. They also accept links, credit cards, US and now government senior citizens pension, public assistance, a disability grant, and of course a TT food card. So go on down, check them out today and save a buck. Now gentlemen, I want to interject a minute here to remind you people for a moment. Think for a minute the sea bridge. What happened as Philip would say, shock doctrine all across the board and money went all every which way. Petra train. Same thing going to happen. It's destroyed shock doctrine and somewhere, somebody at the end of the day is going to be making a lot of money because they're not destroying or getting rid of the plant. We're going to Guyana look at, oil coming. We're going to look and see who's going to buy the boat that Keith says is not making sense to repair. A brand new boat. Which boat? The Express or the, or the Spirit, which one? But you see where the MV Panorama Yeah, yeah, what's is... going wrong? For not taking any pain to do, well... But it is doing human service in Greece. Of course it is. Yes. Arriving and leaving and departing on time. Correct, correct. We've spent $252 million since the PNN destroyed the Sea Bridge and the Superfast Galatia. We've spent $252 million on the Galleons Passage, the Cabo Star, the Ocean Flower, the two barges that we rent. That cost us $252 million so far. If we had just kept the Superfast Galatia, we would have saved $200 million. The cost of rented for five years, one hundred and ninety-five million. But the wrong people was eating our food. They have the right people now, so they had to. Do Kevin, you, mind you see, mind people Kevin, that, when I tell you, right when I tell you, people. when I tell you, we people, when I tell you, I hate when we say things like that. When I tell you, and I know but it's that is sarcasm. As but no, no, I'm not being sarcastic. No, you that are. is exactly what it is. Okay, somebody but, had to eat. Okay, but I say, but, but I say, so they had to change the boat. What Trinidadians have to get? is past decide that side and just get outraged that that is my money. Well, you know, really in, sure. in a lot of places in the world, including right now we are looking at the international news, Germany has a, a protest going on because of migration. But Australia just changed our prime minister again, six yeah. and seven years. Yeah. Well, Australia is the one place that changed prime minister like they changed on the way. But, but, but Robert, because they, were very narrow they are the absolute opposite of us. That elects a dictator to government anywhere else in the world, Keith Rowley would have been before a tribunal, if not law enforcement. There are things that do not make sense that only in this royal, imperial, majestic banana republic you could get away with. 13 minutes before 12 o'clock, that time check comes to you with a kind courtesy of Hearty Foods. Hearty Foods out there in Arima. You know they got some specials, so go on down there and enjoy those specials. Mount St. Benedict Crusade Pork and Parang on the 22nd of September. That's correct. La Hoya Auditoriums, 9 p.m. to 3.30 a.m. Early bird tickets are just $100. You're going to have music by Sensational Sammy Kabuki and the Lara Brothers Parang Band. For more information, please call 298-5182 or 643 
5702. So, 56 years as an independent country. $3 trillion. 93,000 years. If we spend a dollar a second since the Union Jack was dropped, we would have been spending a dollar a second for the next 93,000 years. We spent it in 56. Again, I, I hear you and I, I really appreciate the analysis, but we, we have to understand that, you know. Robert, how could 56 years? Okay, break it down to this. Yeah. In 56 years, if Trinidad had started from scratch, yeah. in 56 years, we should have been able to get water to everybody in this little island. At least. Every different community in Trinidad today will have either artisan water or wells or streams or natural rivers. We get 10 times the rainfall we need. We could have collected it and stored it. We could desalinate. We are in an island. In 56 years, the kind of money we spend on water and sewage, we should have been able to get water to everybody 24-7. Instead, the water tank manufacturers and pump importers have become fabulously wealthy. And the bottled water. The bottled water companies laughing at us. In Singapore, the water that comes out of their taps is better than the quality of the water we buy in bottles in Trinidad and Tobago. That is a fact. 56 and, years. We yeah, couldn't get, we yeah, couldn't solve and, one and, thing. And again, we come back to the question that I asked the, the, the society this morning, and, and it came back very clear that as far as they are concerned, um, there are only a few things they are happy about. I mean, Education is one, but there, there were two other twins. We happy about education? That's what two people said. Robert, up to the 70s, this country had one of the highest standards of education in the Western world. Our children used to leave here in Form 1 and Form 2 and go to the States into Grade 13 and skip two years. Now, we started now, <laughs> now, we have children coming out, what Morgan Job used to call a certification mill, coming out at, at Form 5, functionally illiterate. I have interviewed people who are in university on engineering studies and medicine and can't construct a proper sentence. We take our final break and then when we come back, we wind up the show for today and uh, we say our happy anniversary greetings to you, the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. A lot of ads during the show now, but that's good. All, all mornings, all mornings, you get in that much ads. It does a lot, that's real good. Yeah, 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 right, right, understand. 
6935. Email trinityetc at yahoo.com. Website is www.trinityetc.com. Like us on Facebook, Trinity Lighting ETC Limited, and eat your stress away. Trinity, your one stop shop. Our new Miami address. Metro Shopping Center, 2033 Northeast, 163 Street, North Miami Beach, Florida, 33162. Everybody get ready. It's coming. Mount St. Benedict Crew Annual Fall and Parade. Saturday, September 22nd. Get ready. Okay, we are back, so Philip, I mean, the, a couple unions um, and associations have contacted us. They're coming out to join us this Saturday at noon, 19 Stanmore Avenue. is open to the public, so it should be a mammoth meeting. And those of you who are available who would like to add your voice to the conversation, the journey to rescue Trinidad Tobago is starting now. We want to get everybody, all, all sectors of civil society, Anybody in whatever capacity, whatever you are, every creed, race, religion, whatever political party you used to belong to, come to 19 Stanmore Avenue this Saturday at noon. We're having a conversation. Robert, we have to mobilize from here. And I'm hoping that if you have the time, you could drop by and join in on this conversation. Well, you know, I'm always going to try my best to see how I could get there. But Trinidad and Tobago, again, we started this conversation this morning along with the premises trying to identify who votes and who is registered. It is clear that based on the, the actual non, uh, non-proven, uh, quick... Non-scientific. Check, non-scientific. What was your question? You could think of two things that you don't like to eat. Yeah. Give me two things that you don't like to eat. Chicken. You don't like to eat chicken? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else? And I suppose, um, Grubef, if you want to call Grubef. it. Grubef. Okay. <laughs> If you were invited to dinner yeah. and they had a buffet, yeah. and the only choices was all kind of chicken and all kind of grubel, would you eat? I wouldn't. And that's what the political process has been for a lot of people in Trinidad Tobago. Some to, to, to stop the gas pain, had to hold their nose and eat something. But most people have never enjoyed the buffet that should be our political expression. And we need to change that. Trinidadians and Tobagonians need to understand that there is more to our future than PNM and UNC. And the day we start to stand up as one people and offer ourselves to serve outside of those two failed tribal cult parties, Trinidad and Tobago will start to become the country your ad just said we could be. And I agreed. I said amen when it was playing. I love that ad. And that's exactly how everybody should be thinking. Well, you see, in, in the country we live in today, I don't think that we appreciate the level of democracy or the level of um, ability that we have as individuals or as citizens. We don't accept that that is a part of the solution. We, we continue to run this, this rough shop position without having a sense of appreciation that we are part of the problem. And we are also part of the Politics by VOP. Government by VAPs. We've allowed ourselves nothing like the first world developed blessed paradise this nation should have been. Instead, we are a third world cesspool, failing nation, narco state, banana republic. And we have to face that and own that if we're going to fix it. Well, it starts with... Well, I can't say it starts with you or me because I think we have played our role. But it starts with the citizens of Trinidad. The 99%. The who have not the yet 99%. Who have not Call taken, them out. Who have not taken the position Correct. of being decisive. This is no longer if. just after a political yeah, 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 yeah. There, There's a poll that goes around on Geopole, which is a new scientific uh, mechanism they have set up all over the world. It's it's an app on your phone. Go up and load it if you want. Geopole. Um, you will see polls coming up there every day. Individual people put up polls. I put up a poll as to whether they will vote for somebody who they trust, and over eighty percent of the people have res- responded saying they will vote for somebody who they trust. Who that person is is not yet decided. 
but no, but I want to tell you the experience of Jack Warner and Chuck Warner as the ILP yeah. prove the point yeah. that the right person who is outside of the PNM, but the people of Beatham or Lavantel West or Morva Field would give them better representation, could beat the PNM now. I want to tell you something yeah, that I am not a guy that fools myself. Lavantel, Beatham, um, certain parts of, of um, Port of Spain, Belmont, um, certain parts on the east. Um, when you start thinking about it, um, where, where the government has put up all the property, coffee area, yeah. if you want to call it that. If you call an election now and you put even God there. No, but Nylon Hippolyte. I God will be very disappointed. Nylon Hippolyte had gotten 80% of the party groups asking for him to be their candidate and the PNM foisted Fitzgerald lines on them. No, but if Nylon Hippolyte had run, no, even now and that should expose to the PNM themselves. No, 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 but that, you see, again, Philip, you, you're trying to be very, um... I guess we run out of time. Yeah, we run out of time. But, I mean, the reality is, independence, where you have to tell the nation to let the people lose. Happy independence. Stay safe, Trent Tobago. Robert, see you Saturday at noon, and all of Trent Tobago come to our Independence Day meeting. Closing remarks on independence. Okay. Yeah, happy